this is the sort of conditions I'd like, you know, on, on the Menai or on the sea, you know, where, uh, oh, and having said that, the wind's just gone on us there. But, you know, gallivanting along between four and five miles an hour, which is, you know, three and a half to four and a, maybe four and a half knots, you know, very moderate sea state, slight sea state, and just enjoying the sail, do you know? I'm looking forward to tomorrow, but I'm also really scared. <laughs> First time on the sea alone, which is going to be crazy. Um, there's going to be at least three, possibly five of us in various boats. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. For now, we're going to try and get down to... We're going to get down to... I'm going to go to the Enchanted Forest because we've not been there for ages. Uh, I think we haven't been there all season, have we? And we're going to stop for lunch down there. That's the red house. We're just coming up to the white house here on our starboard water. Starboard bow, beg your pardon. do is tack now maybe go down to the the buoy there or maybe get a slightly better angle I don't know and then I might set the uh, autopilot up and then we'll try and get the anchor ready whilst we're on the go that'd be quite exciting so here goes let's go give us some welly Be able to point far less than you think. There we go. Now I've set the sail a little less than what I probably would normally, but there we go. We're uh, we're auto piloting now, so we'll just sit here and let. Let the boat work itself out. We've just ready the uh, the brew sanker actually. A little gust. The wind is coming from all over the place though, so it doesn't really know where it's coming from at the moment. But here we go. Here's a little gust. quite nothing and then you know and then something which is hard to sail with that especially when they're changing direction so you can see how deep we're able to tack on this course now Pirates Cove that's where we were anchored last week, talking to the cows. The cows and the sheep are all sat under the trees up in the shade up there, if you can just make that out. And we're on a collision course with a cattle ram. Oh yeah. 
very quick boat. They're so fast those catamarans aren't they? They're crazy. <laughs> Tacking with a hand cam. There you go, so look, we can actually look. Before, we couldn't make much progress beyond, it was 240, so there's 240. And now, we're, so we were 60 degrees. Let's see how far in we can get. But the, the wind's liable to change again. So we're headed straight for the Enchanted Forest now and the weather station dead ahead. Making good progress. Wind's gone back to 240, so we're sailing back on bearing 240. Just back to where it was. Um, we, just over my shoulder there is where we want to be, where all those blue sails are. Just past there, there's a white lugger, and we're going to try and anchor around there somewhere. So we're going to sort of tack, and then we're going to reach our way in there. So I've felled the jib, uh, and uh, look how much higher we can point. Look at that, we're aiming, we couldn't hope to aim for that boat there, but now we are, we can go further, look at this. You don't lose much on speed either. Now this is a windward shore, so we're not gonna run into it. If we do, no big deal. This is Lake Barla. <laughs> one sail to worry about and if we come in nice and steep here then we can sort of reach out we might have to jibe or tack just to do that and there is a little mooring boy up there but I'm just going to drop the anchor which is already on the bow of the boat as you can see it's taking an age to get here the wind like we get these little gusts but the closer to this shore, the windward shore, the more grumpy and unpredictable it gets. But we are making progress, we are getting there, inch by inch. And we'll have a nice little break, be nice. Get the sunshade up. I think it's on here. On board somewhere. <laughs> I've had to give up. Just we weren't getting anywhere. And we were just drifting closer and closer to this beach here, so I've dropped the outboard. This is what the outboard is for. The wind was just non-existent coming into here. So little wind, there was nothing to push us back out. So I was hoping to kind of, I was hoping to just drift out. We should just drift out on the anchor here. There we go. So we'll just see what the anchor does, whether it brings us back into shore. If it brings us into shore, we'll just, um, we'll just bring the boat into shore. We might get a little bit of shade actually sat there. In fact, now I've said that, I think that's what I would like to do. I might pull us in on the anchor and uh, just bring us into shore.
Why are kids so noisy? <laughs> Oh, it's nice having a bit of shade, to be frank. It's lovely, isn't it? Look, enchanted forest. <laughs> I love this place. My little girl loves it. And it was one of the first sort of places I adventured to on Mocking D when I was learning to sail. So, yeah, it was like a real find, this was. It's very peaceful when there's no kids about. <laughs> So we're going to beat all the way down to the bottom of the lake and then we're going to try and get the spinnaker flying on the way back because we should be on a broad reach. There we go. Pico, laser Picos, getting the kids on the water. We're in amongst the fleet at the moment, but we're gonna go head down the lake a little bit. Just be, keep our eyes open, because these kids ain't looking where they're going at the moment. They're doing all right, these guys. They're, they're sailing, aren't they? I think they got a little bit flummoxed with me, uh, Bowsbury and all, pointing their general direction and they kind of tacked in front of me. Um, and I think they didn't quite know what to do, but they did the right thing, they just let the boat stop. Oh, the lake is glistening. Oh, it's so beautiful. I hope this bodes well for, you know, my trip tomorrow on the Menai. There we go, and we're there. So there we go, we're gonna let this little girl, I think it's a girl, is it a girl or a boy? Who knows? Simra, we're gonna let her steer us, although we've got no wind now. And then we're gonna furl the jib away because we can't really fly the jib and the uh, spinnaker together. Right then, and here goes nothing. Let's just make sure that everything the way. Well, really, it should be a case of tripping on this. Ah, we're under the jib. That's okay. Jib sheet, should I say? There we go, we're up. Hey, look at that. She's definitely filling. And then we need to let her billow out a bit more, I think. And there we go. 
here's the jib sheet. We only have one because we're using it as symmetry at the jib, the spinnaker. And there she is, flying. <laughs> there she goes. I mean, look at that. She's filling. She's way away from the jib, which is great news. And the autopilot is sailing us, hopefully the right way. We've just gone off a little bit here, but we are trying to correct that course now. There we go. So that sort of part of the sail there, is that the luff looks a little tight. I'm gonna loosen that and just see what happens if I do that. Oh no. Just let that. Try and let it billow out a bit, but no. You can see it's sort of billowing in a bit. So I think we need to, let's just bear off a bit. We are going off a little bit. I'm also gonna let the, the main out a tickle more. There's the gust we've just been waiting for. And you can see the sails reacting. I'm just gonna try and change our course a little bit more. Going, yes, yeah, so you know, we've got to go. I think really we need to be like this. We've just got to be careful of this windward shore here. This is really where we need it. Sort of like that. But I was thinking with the wind coming a little bit sort of on our, basically our starboard quarter, literally behind where we're sitting now, that would be perfect for this sail. So I've just been playing with the sail and to stop that luffing and to make the sail make all sense, I actually pulled the, 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 the line down. Do you see, the more I let the sail out, the more it luffs. So if I pull it in, Look, it luffs less. If I put it in like that, it's in the wrong shape, but it actually works quite well. So you can see it needs to be pulled down at the front. So I'm just gonna show you that now quick. So if we grab that line, there you go, look at that. And that's pulled down. And this is where the cleats would be, here. That would be perfect, although it's still pushing in at the top there a little, isn't it? But. Maybe it needs more. Yeah, look at that, there you go. Oh wow, that's really, I can hardly hold that. Wow, yeah. We are moving three miles an hour. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna bring the spinnaker in and I'm gonna put the jib out and see what we, where we would be without the jib and then with the jib. Let's see if we can, let's see if we can play with that. Hopefully the wind will stay roughly the same. Good old internet. So I've actually just adjusted the the Simrad. Um, you can adjust two things on it. The first thing is the sea state. So if the sea state, I didn't really look into it, but if the sea state is rough or smooth, you can adjust this so it knows. The other thing you can do is adjust the just sensitivity of it. And the sensitivity was a little bit high, so I've knocked it down two points. Um, and hopefully that will keep us sort of on course a little bit more. Um, what was happening was we were going on and off and off and that's because it's not sensitive enough. Um, so we'll see, we'll see how that works. If it doesn't work, we'll, we'll knock it down a bit more. Or maybe we needed to knock it up a bit, make it more sensitive, I don't know. I think I got it the right way around, but there we go. We'll see how it goes. One thing I've really learned about sailing is not to do things in a rush. Uh, I mean, you know, and that's serious. You know, it's when you're rushing to get home, if that's when you make a mistake. And also it really takes the enjoyment out of sailing when you've got to be somewhere for a certain time. And I hate it. And you know, and getting the boat on the trailer and you really want to get off and things like that. So that's why I've come tonight. I could have come and got the boat really early yesterday, uh, tomorrow morning, but 
I would still have been a struggle to get the boat. I probably would have not got up, you know, and I would have been in a bit of a rush, I'd have forgot stuff. And this way's better. And actually, we got a sail today as well, which is great. You know, I wouldn't have got a sail in on Friday otherwise. Yeah, this isn't working. We're going to get these sails in. We're going to motor back, I think. Fold this over the opposite side to the wind and then the wind won't get under it and it won't steer the boat either. So the way we fill this sail is, or where's my a little red? Just keep it out of the way like that. Wayfarer out up there. Don't know who that is. I see that boat a lot though. I think it's a club wayfarer. We should take that out one day. I think we're more than capable of doing that now. That red sail we saw is up ahead, right by the club. Oh wow, and I just saw a fish jump out the water. Right in line with the club. I don't know if that will be picked up on camera, but that was crazy. 